Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company. I'm taking a look at some of the guns that are coming up for sale in their September of 2016 Premier Auction. Now, this one, of course, is something that a lot of people are going to recognize, but I think not a lot of people necessarily know that much about it. Uh, information out there on these is primarily about airsoft guns that look like it, which is really kind of goofy in a way, I think. Um, and then you're going to get information about the movie Shooter, and you're going to get information about uh, fake, like, cardboard uh, models of this gun. And then somewhere down the line, you'll actually find information about the gun itself. Now, this is an M200 Shytac, or Shaytac, Shytac. Uh, the action itself, as on all of these, is actually made by EDM Arms, and it is a bolt action, long range precision rifle, or dare I say, sniper rifle. To be stri strictly speaking, this is a magazine-fed, bolt-action, precision rifle. Now, there are two reasons that this has gotten so much press. One of them it is, is that it is legitimately an extraordinarily accurate and well-made rifle. However, EDM Arms and uh, Shytac make a, a number of different models of extremely precise and high-quality rifles, and this one is the one that gets all the attention, and that's because it looks different. It's got this carry handle, it's got this cool, sexy-looking bipod, it's got this collapsing stock, this one's painted all funky green and tan, and that, that visual image really grabs people's attention. However, that visual in image, honestly, doesn't really have anything to do with the gun's accuracy. You could take the same basic action and barrel system, put it in a traditional style stock, and shoot just as well. It just doesn't have the tactical appeal, which this one does. Now, first off, this, this rifle is chambered for the 408 Shytac round, which is relatively new. Um, it, in fact, was only registered with the CIP in 2013, uh, thus becoming an internationally standardized cartridge. And it was designed by a guy named John Taylor as an intermediate between the 50 BMG and the 338 Lapua Magnum. Now, 338 has long been a favorite uh, precision rifle cartridge for people who are looking to deliver a lot of energy and not just a very precise bullet. Um, 6.5 millimeters are kind of the de facto standard for long-range precision shooting, uh, but if you bump up in size, you can get more bullet weight on target. And, of course, above that, you kind of had to go to the 50 BMG. Well, the 50 was designed as an anti-tank rifle round and then as a heavy machine gun round, not really intended for super precision. And frankly, with today's computer technology, we can do a lot better than the 50 BMG for long-range ballistics. And, and that's what drove the 408 Shytac, to get something really designed for precision fire that was kind of in the ballpark of 50 BMG. Uh, it has a couple of different loadings. Now, the standard loading is a 419 grain bullet traveling at 2850 or 2900 feet per second, which is a crap ton of muzzle energy, uh, about 8300 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. To put that in comparison, a typical 338 Lapua Magnum is going to give you about 6,300 pounds. A typical 50 BMG is going to give you, you know, about 14,000 foot-pounds. So uh, the reduced muzzle energy actually also gives you reduced recoil, which is nice, about a third less recoil than a 50 BMG. Uh, the weight of this rifle is also going to tamp down recoil. This thing weighs approximately 29 pounds unloaded, which is a ridiculously heavy gun. People might wonder why there's this weird-shaped big carry handle. Well, it's because you really need a big carry handle to actually carry this thing. You put it on the bottom because people are going to put a big expensive scope on top, and you don't want to have the handle too far out front because then the thing's balanced all wrong. This is about the center point of the rifle. This is where you want the carry handle. You can put it down here, not interfere with your scope, uh, not have to elevate the scope above a carry handle, anything like that. That's probably the most visually distinctive element of the gun, and that's why it's there. It's because this thing is too heavy to reasonably carry any other way. Now this tube here is a free-floated tube connected to the receiver, so it doesn't actually touch the barrel, which means weight on the bipod doesn't impact your point of aim. This is a very important concept, but it's one that's well recognized in precision shooting and has been for decades, if not hundreds of years. Now this is a box magazine fed rifle. Uh, this magazine is a five rounder. They did also make, or do also make, seven round mags for this rifle. Difference is really kind of negligible. It's not like you do a lot of super fast reloads on this. It's just a matter of convenience for having a number of rounds in the gun um, all at once, so you don't have to break your position to reach for new cartridges while you're 
cycling the bolt. It does have a rear monopod which is folded up inside here, which is certainly helpful for uh, getting a nice fixed, uh, fixing the gun in position for a shot. Now something that I think a lot of people don't really take into account or don't recognize is that a rifle like this is only one single part of a l much larger equation that's what you need to get an accurate hit at, say, 2,500 yards. This rifle, according to the manufacturer, is good out to 2,500 yards. It'll stay sub-minute of angle, uh, which means less than a one-minute one dispersion. Well, a minute is 1.024 inches at 100 yards, and we usually just round that off to one inch at 100 yards. So a one-minute cone of angle at 100 yards is a one-inch circle. When you get to 2,500 yards, you're looking at about a 24-inch circle, so about two feet around. That's, that's one minute of angle, a cone, one minute of angle wide. Uh, what typically is the limiting factor on a, a rifle's performance out to extreme range is that when the bullet drops through the sound barrier, goes from supersonic through transonic down to subsonic, typically it, interf it, it hits its own shockwave and the interference there destabilizes the bullet makes it much more difficult to, to keep it accurate beyond that distance. Well, the bullets for the 408 Shytac will stay supersonic until about 22 to 2500 yards. Um, beyond that, there's some evidence that they, they actually perform very well going through transonic, and they stay quite accurate after that, but the company doesn't go out and actually make that claim officially. Although some people certainly have made hits with these rifles at three and four thousand yards, which is really kind of mind-blowing. Now you do have to consider the size of the target at that range, but regardless. So in addition to just having a super fantastic, mind-blowingly accurate rifle, you have to do a lot else in order to make hits at long range. You have to be a good shot. You have to have the trigger control to actually pull the trigger when the scope's right on target. Uh, more important than that, or more difficult than that, you have to be able to understand a wide variety of environmental factors that are going to affect where the bullet goes. So uh, today we have nice cool little handheld calculators, like in our phones, that can account for a lot of this. Things like humidity, temperature, uh, elevation. You're looking for ambient air pressure, which varies by elevation, it varies by temperature. What is the air density? We have meters, we can read that, we can calculate that stuff out. We need to know the exact uh, drag coefficients on the bullet so that you know how, how quickly it will slow down through the air. Uh, and of course the air density affects that. You also, m the most difficult part probably, is reading the wind. You have to know, well, how fast is the wind going and in what direction because it's going to blow that bullet off target. That is really an acquired skill because, yes, you can measure the wind right where you are with a fancy little Kestrel uh, weather station doohickey. But that only tells you the wind right here. The wind 3,000 yards that way is going to be something totally different, different uh, velocity, different direction, and you could have any number of wind patterns between where you are and where the target is that are going in all manner of different directions, especially if you're shooting in areas with hills and canyons, uh, all sorts of things that can change wind patterns. So it takes an incredible amount of time and skill and effort and practice to be able to actually read wind patterns by looking at environmental factors. Look at the grass, look at the trees, flags if there are any. Uh, when it comes down to it, frankly, looking at the mirage in your scope can help tell you where the wind is going and how fast. And, and you need to be able to uh, properly estimate that and account for it. Um, match which direction the different wind patterns are going, figure out an average net wind, dial that into your scope, and then make a shot. So just someone who just picks up one of these rifles probably can't make that sort of hit. In fact, I'll go out farther, I'll say cannot just make that hit unless they have a substantial amount of practice under their belt working with a system like this. So in some ways the, the amount of fawning adoration over guns like this is rather misplaced. They are, don't get me wrong, fantastic guns, but this is the easiest part of the equation. You can go out and just buy this and have it. Getting the actual skills means you have to spend time and effort and practice acquiring those skills. Now if you happen to be one of those people who's got the practice under your belt, maybe you've been doing lots of thousand yard shooting with a 6.5 and you're ready to move up to something that's got a little bit 
greater uh, long range potential, super long range potential, well, maybe this is the rifle for you. If you take a look in the description text below, you'll find a link to Rock Island's catalog page on this guy. You can see their pictures and description. You can place a bid on it online. Uh, comes with a cool Night Force scope here. Uh, they've got all the details on that on the catalog page. So it also, of course, comes pre painted in kind of drippy green and tan. And you know what? It really does look cool. So I'm sure this will hopefully find a good new home with someone. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something today.